Welcome to SF Garnish Music Production. My name is Justin Anchetta, and I'm here with Cello Joe. We're going to oh, be yeah. working on a track. Hey, how's it going, Cello Joe? It's going good. All right. So we're going into this Able Ableton track right away. And here we are. Actually, I just want to give you guys a heads up that we're teaching Ableton and Logic. And this Logic track, Joey, I wanted to share this with you because... Oh, you got some sounds going on. Oh, it's me. Wow. Even with the volume off, that the the wah wah cello is coming through big. All right. So, um, are you seeing? Um, there we go. Are you seeing that over there, Joey? Yeah. Okay. Cool. I literally just figured this out three seconds ago that through Zoom, I'm sharing my second camera with Joey so that he can kind of be with us. And then through OBS, I'm going to give you guys the different views. Okay, so here we are in jump, 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 Logic. And this is a track that Joey and I did with Evan Frazier from Dirtwire a while back. And I'm just going to do a little preview of some of the overlaying things that we did at Soul Graffiti Studios. This is before the pandemic. And um, we're hoping to mix this with our extraordinary engineer and teacher at is it? Garnish. <laughs> and that is Danny X. He's going to be helping us out. He was also the engineer in the studio when we were at Soul Graffiti. Um, Alex, are you on the call too? Whoa, fractals. Fractals. Look at that. You guys aren't seeing it too much here. Why don't I just show you guys? Um, oh, looks like Alex. There we go. I just muted Alex. So um, here we go. You guys can see the fractals on this live stream beginning soon. If you guys hear a crying baby in the background, it is because I am in the dining room. That's right. At home. That's what we're doing here in the quarantine. Thankfully, we got friends like Cello Joe that can uh, sit through and, uh, yeah, do this with us. So, Joey. Are you yeah, bro. Yeah, bro. Are you ready to listen to a little bit of this uh, Evan Frazier action? It, actually, we put Marin Medke over the top and my own voice, and we got some Cello Joe in, of course. Yeah, I'm ready to play it. All right, so we'll just do a quick preview. This is in Logic. This is a great tool for all of you that want to start a DAW and just have some really great presets. Um, Logic is created by Apple and it's just really easy to use. So here we go. Oh, and I have the wheel of death. All right. We got to make sure these preferences are set up correctly. It looks like I went to Zoom, and I want to actually go through and play in XR18. Oops. Are you hearing that, Joey? Yep. Beautiful. We got a nice moop sound over there, Evan Fraser. Make these lines 
Yeah, you guys put in a lot of work. Awesome. Cool. Thanks, man. Yeah, yeah. Um, I did. a. I also had a conversation with Danny X. Uh, we met through Zoom and just talked about the different options of doing file sharing and how we might be able to use Splice um, and share this file. And you can overdub some things, do some cello work and beatboxing vocals. And then we can even do that with Evan Frazier and Josh if they're open to it as well. Um, I'm hoping that we can get about eight tracks or maybe a full album out in 2020 um, with all this. So that's one of the goals. And Joe, you're always um, creating new releases, right? Pretty much. As much as I can, you know. Yeah. So um, that said, we also have our Ableton track right here. Hey, now, you guys are seeing double of that. I'm going to bring down this to my little device to push to so you guys can kind of see if we use the push to at all to change scenes and work on this you guys can kind of see how that's working out we're going to be doing some dj lessons and one of the things that we're going to be working on is having multiple views because you obviously need to see the deck the hands of the teacher and then also the students screens and the teacher's screen all right, Joey. So yeah. I'm going to play you. Um, how should we do this? It looks like the way this is done today, Joey, um, I, it's going to be harder to share um, the screen and, and then have you take over. So what That's if you kind of what if you were like telling me what to do and I and I did it kind of deal? That's fine. OK. Um, all right, so we obviously added um, a bunch of Josh Mellinger tracks last time, and I was hoping to get some more of that in the future. Let's see here. Let's just make sure that we can play some of the new tracks of Josh. They're in here somewhere. All right. You know, Evan Fraser has two packs on Splice, so um, he's pretty busy with doing stuff with Dirt Wire. So if we're going to add more of Evan Fraser, it be might be good to just use some of his samples. Yeah, totally. And actually, same with Josh here. Yeah. Bummer. It looks like the Splice packs are on a different computer of Josh. So we might have to work on that a different day. But we do have a lot of us that we could work on. Okay. So in the beginning of the no dice track that we are kind of emulating with this, I noticed that he had a lot of reverse effects in the very beginning. You got really quiet, Joey. Did something change? No. Okay. I guess you weren't talking. So since Joey wants to look at that push, I will go ahead and just take this screen off for the time being. That's 
a bouncing ping pong ball, Joey. I don't know if you just heard that. Oh, there's a sound of a bouncing ping pong ball. Yeah. I did a couple um, interesting things here that I, I'm hoping to actually create an instrument out of it. Oh, dude, that's cool. I like that. It's oh. like very natural. Pretty, it's pretty high in the mix, obviously. I'll, I'll bring that back a lot. Uh, uh, that works. You don't want to just... Sh you can't just share your screen. Uh, huh, huh, huh. That is true. Let me, let me try this. So, um, yeah, this is the first time we're actually using OBS and Zoom and all of our DAWs all at once. So we'll see how far we can get. Um, desktop one. Let's go ahead and do share desktop one. Yo, one of my friends, um, Connor, uh -huh. he goes by Earl Ponick. What he was doing was he was using um, Zoom and doing a screen share mm -hmm. and broadcasting from Zoom but then he was broadcasting his screen and he put OBS as the thing that he was uh, sharing his screen. And then that allowed him to kind of like create different visual elements all in the same desktop. Um, after, that's how after we're done with the show, you can see that we're doing that already. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's what we're doing today. We have an SF Garnish logo on the bottom of this. Um, I have a T5 camera up above, which is a, oh, okay. uh, so which, which you're not seeing me, but uh, they have a visual of me. Oh, uh, okay. And then uh, there was an intro that, that played, et cetera. That, yeah. You should be able to put a visual of me as well. I, as a matter of fact, have, um, let's see here. Let's let's try and figure that out because we, we we got the audio working, um, but I want to focus on if anyone wants to learn more about OBS and the tech side of things, we are going to post some things on our YouTube page around what we did exactly. Um, but hopefully today in a, in, our in the next forty minutes we can get through some of the track here of Tipper. Are you down for that, Joey? Yeah, sure. Okay. Cool. Um, and looks like, actually, if you can take over my screen right now, ask to take it over, um, why don't you take over and I will see if I can actually work on the other screen and um, set up a, a visual of you. Oh, okay. All right. Um, I go here, request remote control. Boom. All right. All right, so it looks like I only have one mi mouse. So if you start taking over control, does it mess up my mouse? Go ahead and try. Um, okay. Let's see. If I go right here. Oh, you're right. Okay, it is true. So when, you take, when you take over, I only have one mouse, so I can't actually work on the other screen. <laughs> wow. But that's okay, though. So, but we do have it to where we got you doing some uh, control in here. Do you see um, this ping, ping pong ball? Yeah, ping pong ball right here. If we look at view, we can view the video screen, I believe. Is that where it is in view? Video window right there. Do you see video window? Yeah, it's command option B. I know. So there's the ping pong ball. That, that's pretty much what we did. We bounced the ping pong ball in different surfaces from different heights. Ah, oh, looks like you guys can't actually see that. Um, oh, because it's floating. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. 
I believe I figured out one thing. Um, I just figured out how to show you. So um, I must on I'm on desktop one now. And your visual of you should be here. Hey Joey, I figured it out. You got it. I got it. I have a I have, I have a visual of you, me, and uh, and my other device as well. That's pretty cool. Who would have thought? Okay. So yay technology! Yay technology! All right, you guys got to see me do a little bit of editing live there on uh, our OBS control. Uh, let's see if we can do a visual ping pong. You can see the ping pong ball too. Awesome, that's great. So, I was just taking that and I was thinking, Joey, that it'd be cool to make an instrument that um, had a different sound than a ping pong ball, but used that, that bouncing effect um okay. to kind of cue it up. Do you have any ideas on if we'd use simpler for that or simpler sampler? I don't really use simpler and sampler that much, so I don't really know what the differences are, but uh I think either of those would work. Okay, well here's here's one where I brought it into this is simpler and I put a pedal a pedal on it, I put a drum bus on it. So when we're playing this, I'll just solo this out so you can kind of hear it. Yeah. So when I was doing that, it actually had, um, I don't know if you guys can see this. Um, I was able to play the notes differently. And the octaves of, of that bouncing ping pong ball. And you can really do this with any sound, a beatbox or literally a skateboard fall, whatever you want. Um, so I, I already did this right here, but I was hoping that we can actually bring this in to cue up some electronic sounds. Do you have any ideas on how we might be able to do that, Joey? Um, what do you mean to bring it in to cue up some electronic sounds? Uh, so these notes and how it's coming through, like how, how the ball is bouncing and getting faster like that. Yeah. I was thinking that it could actually be a bell. It could be it could be any sound, um, or some some glitchy noise. So, well, one thing that I recently discovered was um, through uh, collaborating with Aroponic was um, using the wavetable effect or whatever instrument the wavetable instrument and when you drop a sample in there it just you can make so many crazy sounds off of off of anything dropping it into wavetable if you put that ping pong ball into the wavetable mm -hmm. i'm not sure it's an audio effect i think it's an instrument it's like the simpler okay yeah so and you just basic wavetable just on its own MIDI track, its own MIDI track here. I'm pretty sure. I haven't done it myself. I just saw him do it, so. Interesting, okay. I'm not really sure how it works, but um, I think that's how it works. Okay, so any sample, so I, I should probably just cut this to be the one that I want, so. Oops, that's not showing up because. Oh, that's kind of cool. I could rearrange it for you guys too. Um, let's try that out. That's the one I want. So Command E, copy that. 
I want to copy it into our new wavetable because Joey says wavetable it. Paste it. I don't, I don't really know. We're I, I'm learning how to do this too right now. I don't know if this is going to work oh, or not. Absolutely. Did yeah, it really fast. Yep. This is the cool thing um, is that we didn't plan any of this out. This is really us talking shop around how to use Ableton Live in a very basic way and also a very advanced way. Um, let's see here. Can I make that bigger? I don't want this whole thing to be just as big as. Unfortunately not. Joey is just going to be. Okay, I'm just getting distracted here by moving a screen around that Joey can't see. I'm sorry, dude. <laughs> it's okay. I'm doing I'm doing similar distracting things. Okay. So. so ping pong ball, we want to make you be something different. Wavetable is a great idea. Now, wavetable is engaged. Let's see how this sounds. So this is how Wavetable sounds right now. Really? Oh. Um, it's, so Wavetable is an instrument in itself. Maybe maybe you have to go to like Matrix or something. See this Matrix right here? Um, where? It's along the top of the Wavetable. It oh. says OSC1, OSC2, mod sources, then it says Matrix, and then it says MIDI. Yeah. I just I, I I just know that um Connor was using this with a sample somehow. I don't know how he did it, but um it was making some stuff that sounded really cool. Totally. Lo oops. Your mic your mouse there you go. Um Is that it? No. That's not it. No. Okay. My bad. I guess that, that's not what you're supposed to use. Well, this is actually, I do want it to, to end up cueing something like Wavetable eventually, but how it communicates to that. Oh, here's an idea. I, I select this and I say, make a MIDI track out of it. Make a drums MIDI track. Now that it's a MIDI track, this can now be played like Wavetable. And I can drop Wavetable in. Okay. So here's a basic example of, well, unfortunately, it didn't pick out the exact tones because it's a ping pong ball, but this is what it got from it. Let's just go to highlight that. Hey. <coughs> You should take take maybe the um, top line where it's all the same note and um, delete that if you don't. Yeah, all the F sharps maybe take. Um, or make those the different notes. I think that that's actually, that's the most bouncing drop ball, you know, like. Oh, okay, yeah, I see that know. now. Um, let's open this grid up a little bit so I can. Jeez Louise. Oh my gosh, it just keeps on making it smaller for me. It's having a difficult time saying, I just want it gone. These are all the same notes, but just saying that it's they think it's a double. So instead of it being here, I think a higher register, um, if I do shift up, yeah, it goes to a whole octave higher. Every time I did that twice, we're on the F sharp three and then I'm going to take these and drop them by a note and all of a sudden we have a ping pong ball that is dropping with notes let's just kind of see how this sounds Joey I've never done this before I'm going to take this off fold so I can really oh weird they actually they have a scale for me or something
eventually we could actually put this in the in the key of what we want it to be. This is a cool thing about powwowing with your friends like Joey Chang is like he just throws the idea out around wavetable and boom <laughs> we end up just doing it. That's how Ableton is. Anything that you put your mind to with sound, you can accomplish. Um, the same thing goes with logic, but I got to say Ableton is like a little bit more confusing, but because it has a little bit more depth to it. Um, so if you're really go trying to go the whole thing, you know, years and years of experience and get somewhere with your music, I would really say Ableton. What do you say, Joey? You know, I've used Ableton mostly, and I've also dabbled in Logic, so I just don't really know. I know that Logic has some features that make it maybe a little bit better for recording like a live band, but um, I prefer Ableton because you can basically do everything in um, in Ableton just like you do in uh, totally. Logic, but Logic does have like a like a Pro Tools Pro Tools esque style of like take management, where if you do like five takes of something, you can kind of like switch between all the different takes and not have to have five different tracks. Totally, yeah. There's there's some really cool features. There are workarounds in Ableton to to do it really quickly with some cool shortcuts, but it is a really cool feature in Logic just to be able to do a second take and it saves it all nice and organized for you right away. Um, all right, so here we are. We're going to play this for you. Here's the dropping ball with sound. Hey, Joey Chang. Look at that you. That one's pretty cool. And then, you know, another thing that you could do that's fun is um, if you hot swap on the wavetable and plug in different sounds from the wavetable, all these different patches over here, this ambient involving bass, brass, effects, all these different ones. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Totally, totally. Let me uh, make this a little bit higher register because I feel like we're going to hear it more. Um. All right. Painful. Too high? Yeah. Let's too make it bounce up hard. a little bit. Looks like it's nap time for the baby. Oh boy. Can can you hear her over here, Joey? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Alright. He's so cute. Alright. Love you, baby. It's nap time. Hey. All right. So you want to do hot spot, hot swap with these different sounds right over here? Yeah. Okay. So hot swap, we go take the hot swap. And or press Q. Q? Yeah, the letter Q. Hot swap. Awesome. So, um, but I have to actually press return to engage it? No, I think if you if you loop that track that you just made and let it play, and then click on the various different options. For yeah, just like that. All right. Yeah, like that. Like you just loop it and let it play, and then. Uh, but that actually wasn't happening. So let me. Here, I'll, I'll try it again. You want to double click? There we go. You got to double click the thing if you want to actually put it into the wavetable. Yeah, this is the interesting thing. Is is with the hot swap? Um, even if I don't press Q, if I double click, it goes in. So I'm not really sure what the Q and the hot swap is making quicker. It should just be that I could just scroll through these easier, right? No, 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 no. Um, when, uh, 
when when you have the track playing and you have that MIDI clip soloed and you have hot swap engaged, when you double click something, it should put the uh, the patch that you're double clicking into the arrangement into the actual track and it should play the ping pong cement clip with the new sound. But it does that even without hot swap playing. Maybe something changed in the way that uh, Wow. Did you ever think a ping pong ball can sound like that, Joey? <laughs> well, it's really just the rhythm of the ping pong ball, right? Pretty much, yeah. Um, it might be cool to have stuff that... Yeah, it's more like... Uh... I mean, watch this. So, so hot swap is not on. If I double click this, it automatically brings it in. Okay. Well, I don't know. hot swap. Wow. That's kind of cool. Let's go ahead and just copy this over and just put it somewhere, maybe in the song where there's a dropout. Where's a good dropout, Joey? Uh, I would look right before one of those uh, markers that you have. Breakdown. All right. So it looks like we're s we're soloing. Uh, okay. We have a lot of tracks here. We can get really dialed here and actually know the key, you know, that we're that we're trying to play, um, and put these in a very specific pattern. I can I can do that um, offline, and I'll even make a little note right here, and then maybe we go to something else. Rename, uh, put in key of song, and I like to put stuff in red that I'm about to change up eventually um, actually orange red means like get rid of it redo it <coughs> wait what does actually you know what I'll do red because I, I do want to change that completely it's like a, a retake it means that I'll if it's an audio file I would go back and like go over it again or I'll shift it around or you know change the MIDI notes or drum notes okay um, and then what does orange mean orange is just less priority like red red is like this has to be done because and orange is like this should be done soonish yes yeah I, I haven't figured that one out that's why I just did did red <laughs> I just got caught thinking out loud I'm not really sure what orange is gonna be but color coding your stuff super helps out um, when, when things are done, I really like to be like, this is green. And I'll make it green and be like, don't touch this. I'll even sometimes freeze those tracks. Um, it also helps out that tracks that are already red, like this, like, let's make it a different color instead of red. Because red is, we have, like, you know, a code for that already. So let's not confuse ourselves, people. Yeah. All right. Joey Chang. Um go ahead dude. I'm going to put my mouse down here. Your your turn. Okay. Um it's kind of hard to just like jump right in 
having not really heard the track in a week. So I kind of want to just listen to it. Yeah, totally. Um, you said that at the beginning, um, there's more reverse sounds in the original track. Yeah, totally. It, it just has like this kind of backward um, kind of beat melody, and then it comes in with the real thing. And so I thought that might be maybe we could cool. try and work on that a little bit. Yeah, maybe even sample a portion of the song, put it in reverse, and okay, put it in the front. Who knows? Uh, uh, my controls are not really working. I'm pushing the play button and it's not doing anything. So maybe you should just do the controlling because it doesn't seem like it's working very well for me. Can you try? Um, oh, it worked there. Oops. Uh oh. Sorry, Joey. You just got into a different screen on my computer. Not how you okay. Try again and. Um, I think all of your keys on your keyboard should take over my control as well. So you can use your your space bar to start and stop. Maybe right where it was when that little uh, guitar comes in. That's like, ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da. you know that? Yeah, yeah. So maybe the backward guitar portion. Yeah. Coming in soon. it now coming up okay that part right there right yeah okay I'm thinking like from here. Here, I'm gonna move this again. Uh oh. Sorry, Joey. I just covered your face in my OBS. I'm gonna move it. Hey, there's Joey again. And I'm. I'm gonna be the same size as Joey. I my head was bigger than yours for a while there. So. Well, that's par for the course, Justin. Hey now. <laughs> you're my teacher, bro. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'm going to set a marker at the beginning and end. So this right here, this is the loop that I want. I'll loop that. This is our section we're going to work on. Um, I have an idea where I'm going, like, so we'll do exactly what Joey wants to do here, which is take this section and put it in to um, the beginning of the song in reverse. But we need to actually make that reverse track. So I, I'm i gonna do a resample. Do you see resample here at all? I don't see it. I'm gonna make a new resample track um, and just send everything to it. Ah. And my other camera turned off, but not to worry, I have a way of turning it back on easily. Okay, there we go. So we have our resample track not named resample. So So I want this to go I want everything to go to the resample track. 
So I'm going to select all of these, and it says to master currently. Um, and I'm going to change it to resample. All right. Very easily, those can be changed back to master. I purposely took it out of gr um, like scene, the internals of a group, because I want those to still send to the main group in all of our effects. There we go. It's all coming through. All right. We got it. And we are going to reverse it. Should we stretch it a little bit too? Stretch it. Oops. That's not stretching it. Hey, how, shift. how do you stretch it? You got to hold down some kind of key or something? Yeah, you hold down shift. Very cool. You want the beat in there too? Oh, so just the guitar, you thinking? I don't know. We could do that. I, I, I was, thought, think, I was I thinking. thought you were talking about having like melodic instrument type things. Let's, let's try it again that right maybe even like none of the bass right yeah and, uh, just just some of the okay still got some of the bass sound in there really I thought I took that out your bass sound Bass delay. Okay, but, uh, let's let's do. I mean, I could just like have just the guitar play. That thing that's like. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, you know what's happening? What? That's my unclean guitar track, bro. Oh. Remember that. Stuff already in there yeah but you know what though watch this i can take that out no nope. worries we're gonna take an eq and we're just gonna go squash italy squash sauce boom copy paste squash that out okay that should help it's still there, but yeah, you just got rid of it. Better? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so let's do that. We want to take this track and reverse it similarly. I think you can type the R key and it reverses stuff. Oh, wow. Yeah. Nice. Got to know those keyboard shortcuts. Increase your workflow. stretched crazy Let's maybe see. it's because of your warp mode your warp mode's on me well i i was doing that shift button thing oh here let's we could actually make that smaller and that could be cool little chipmunk or chipmunk one of it and then have another one stretched Ooh. 
What happens when you change from beats to complex pro on the warp of the sample? Let's find out. It's the second one right here that we're hearing me change, so it's that only. Pitch definitely made a difference. Really, what it is is um, it gives you the option to change these settings just below. And playing with these various uh, warp modes can do a lot for, like down sampling or up sampling. Yeah, it's just. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, I mean, are you thinking about this one in the beginning, Joey? Is that what you want to do? Well, why don't we just put those in the intro part and see what it sounds like? I think what no dice, yeah. Let's try that right there. Aha. Uh -huh. Let's take it off. Oh, you know what's happening? Everything is sending not to the main. It's sending to the resample. Oh, and you might want to remove the EQ that you put on that track that you were resampling. Um, that's, that's possible. I, I think it might clean up the guitar, actually. I think you were, that, that was good, because we have that bass uh, already in the song. Oh, so just leave it in there. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Okay. Yeah, this whole fade-in thing, it doesn't quite work with this effect. Maybe just before the beat or something, it can c do this or something. Yeah. You can put some fades on the sample itself so it doesn't just come in really you know, s abruptly like that. Oh. Bring it down the volume here. The right hand side of the screen. Nice. We could probably put that in multiple areas of the song, even. That, that could be cool. Let's we'll see where that happens. So at any point, if we wanted to actually play the ping pong balls live, we could just put on that track uh, by rec in record mode. There it is. We also have our other instruments right next to it. Uh, I think we're in the key of is it C sharp minor. Did we actually say that? It says F sharp here. Oops. There. F sharp. Okay. 
I I think it's uh, C sharp. So I'm gonna actually go in here and set my scale. There we go. What are you saying, Joey? Some cool sounds in there that I heard that I don't remember from the oh, last time I heard this track. I was just playing that, dude. That's, that's that sound that we created, the uh, Grody Bell. Oh. Hey, is that actually um, coming up on, on your screen, too? You can, you can see my hand moving on the Zoom. Yeah. farther with this. Oh. That a few parts of the, you should choose a few parts of the song to record in some of that stuff that you were just doing with that sample. Yeah, totally. Uh, well, what's great is because we're in the right key, it really just makes it easy to kind of play over. Um, right over the top of it. Cool. Some big breakthroughs here, Joey, not only in Ableton Live, but I think in the tech world, the fact that we're, we're meeting through Zoom and we, are, we have the ability to show not only our DAW of Ableton, but we can also go into Logic. I just want to um, go out with our track that we did before the pandemic. We were at Soul Graffiti Studios and we did this track with Evan Frazier. We're hoping to also get Josh Mellinger on this as well. Get a little Joe Vintinger action going. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we're going to go out with this. I hope you guys enjoyed yourselves and uh, you learned something. Um, for all you people that just tuned in or fast forwarded to this last outro, check out the part where we changed our instrument, the bouncing ball video to MIDI and then brought it into a MIDI instrument and had that take over control of that MIDI instrument. Um, in the future, what I'd probably want to do is um, put the key in actually first too, but we can, we can get to that. Um, all right, here it is, Joey. Thanks so much for being uh, with us every Wednesday, 12 to 1, SF Garnish Music Production. Here's a track from Soul Graffiti Studios featuring Cello Joe, Evan Frazier, and Justin Anchetta. I have the wheel of death. Let's find out what happens.
taste of what's coming on some of the cello joe collaborations through our different DAWs. we got logic showing right now and we also love ableton if you guys want to learn any of these daws come to sf garnish music production we are in our studio teaching online and in-person classes once the covid19 opens up hopefully this summer uh, a lot of courses are starting in June, so please sign up at sf.garnishmusicproduction.com and we look forward to seeing you again really soon. Yeah. 